Nikon D5200 menu settings. This is the third video in my Nikon D5200 settings series the second installment of the shooting menu. I did another installment about the shooting menu last week. That video is linked up in the cards up there right now. So go and look at that first if you haven't seen it. There will also be a third installment about the shooting menu coming next week. So don't go away. Hi there, I'm Barry Callister of Barry Callister Photography, founder and creator of PhotographersFreedom.com, giving you the time, gear and skills to be the best photographer you can be. Welcome to my channel and thank you so much for watching this video. My channel is all about photography tutorials, Lightroom and Photoshop tutorials, photography gear reviews and other nature photography related things. So if you like that, hit subscribe and ding that notification bell. If you're a blog reader, you might want to check out my blog over at PhotographersFreedom.com. I've put the link in the description down below. There are loads of posts there, photography tutorials, photography business advice, uh, affiliate marketing for photographers and much more. So if you want to check it out, do so right now. Let's get into the content. So to get to your shooting menu, you just press the menu button up here on the left hand side and that will bring up this. It will light up one of these icons or it may be like that. It may have some, some of these options over here selected. It depends where you've been the last time you were in there but if you haven't been using it it will light up one of these icons over here and so you just scroll up or down with your multi selector we want the little camera icon and then you can either press OK or the right side of the multi selector to take you across and choose whichever option you want within the shooting menu in the previous video we looked at set picture control and I mentioned manage picture control briefly so this is where we'll kick things off in this video. So if I go across here, you can see this is where you save, edit, rename, delete, or load, or save picture control presets. Basically, these are your favorites. You can change the settings in each of these picture control options here and save them as a, a preset. So let's say I wanted to edit the Vivid there, I can either press OK or I can go across with the right side of the selector switch and I can adjust all these values in here. So what I'll do actually is I'll just go back for starters because I wanted to mention why rename and delete are greyed out here. They are greyed out because I actually haven't saved any presets yet. So if you have some saved, rename and delete will be lit up and you'll see that in a minute once we create one. So we'll go down to Vivid and we'll edit that one. If I click OK, you can see that we have one, two, nine unused spots where we can store our own little preset here. So we'll go across and choose to edit slot one. So you've got this menu here with all these letters and numbers and if you scroll down with your multi-select, you've got symbols also. So you can change this to rename it to whatever you like. Now to move the cursor down here, use your command dial up there, back and forth. To delete any number, letter or symbol down here, simply press the trash can down there and then scroll back and we'll click trash can again. And I'll just, for the sake of saving time here, I'll just name this vivid me so we'll go up and across so you just click ok to select whatever letter you want to select that and say yes that's what i want what i want to call it just press the zoom button and that will take you out and now we have as you can see rename and delete are lit up and we can go across and we can now edit our vivid me which is down the bottom so i'll click ok on that and you can see it's at the top of the list there. We will go back and we will go in and we will edit it by pressing across to the right with our multi selector. So I can change any value in here that I want. Let's say I want to turn the sharpening up there. I can do that. I can scroll down and drop the contrast. I can leave the brightness. We'll put the saturation up there and the hue will go up one on that too. And we press OK to save that and that is stored in there as a preset. So if I go back out of that, 
we can then select that there, you press OK. If I go out of this here, you will see, if I press the information button, we can go down to our feature controls down here and our first one will be in there. So that's our Vivid Me, we can select that and use that. So that is Manny's picture control. That is what you do with that setting. I'll just delete this by going across, click OK. It'll say it's in use, but I want to delete it anyway. Yes, please. And we're done. And then I'll set it back to what it was at before, to standard, that's fine, all good. Auto distortion control when switched on will reduce the barrel distortion created by wide angle lenses and the pin cushion distortion in photos taken with long lenses. This is easy, you just choose on or off in here. So if you click on, that is on. I have never used this as of course you can do this in Lightroom or Photoshop, but if you don't have either of those editing softwares or anything like them, you probably would want to switch that on. Moving down, we have color space. This is where you choose the range of colors the camera will use to reproduce your photos. And inside of here, you can see we have sRGB or Adobe RGB. The RGB in both of these stands for red, green, and blue. Your camera will use combinations of these colors to capture your images. So sRGB is a widely used color space, so it's okay to you to leave it at that. Adobe RGB is more for publishing and commercial printing. So I normally leave mine set at sRGB. Active delighting is next. This preserves details in your highlights and shadows. So it gives you a more natural contrast in your photos. So if we click across into there, you can see you've got the option of auto, extra high, high, normal, low or off. So this is kind of like having a flash when you don't have one. It sort of gives you the effect, same effect that a flash would give. You can also set these from your information screen here. So if you click the I button and you go across and up to ADL, that's your active delighting, and then all those settings are in there. Next, we have high dynamic range. This will combine two images to produce a picture that has a wide range of tones from shadows to highlights. In other words, if you take a landscape shot, for example, with a bright sky and a dark foreground, the camera will combine two images that expose for both of those areas separately. So one image will be exposed for your highlights, one will be exposed for the shadows, and it will combine both of those into an image that looks a lot better. Now, this will be grayed out if you have not, if you have, sorry, raw selected up here. We'll select raw in the image quality options there. And if I scroll back down, you can see high dynamic range is grayed out. So it's not available when you're shooting raw. So you need to have some sort of JPEG selected there. So you can see that I can now select that. And if I go across, we have all these options in here. We have auto, extra high, high, normal, low, or off. Now keep in mind that this will only work with matrix metering. So on your information screen here, down the bottom in the middle there, you have your metering. So you wanna make sure that is set to matrix, not center weighted or spot as this will work best with matrix metering. Also make sure that you have your camera on a tripod as I do here, because you don't want any movement during the shooting of a HDR image. Now another couple of things to note here is that depending on the scene that you're photographing, the HDR settings may not work. So they may not be noticeable. It can also produce shadows around light objects or halos around dark objects. I've never actually used it as I'm not really a fan of HDR done in this way. So I can't really tell you how well it does or doesn't work. Our final option in the shooting menu for this video is long exposure NR. The NR here stands for noise reduction. If this is turned on, any exposure longer than one second will have noise reduction applied in camera. Now this obviously 
increases the time it takes for the camera to process the image and if you turn the camera off while it's processing it, then the noise reduction will not be applied to the photo. That concludes this installment about the shooting menu. Part four of my Nikon D5200 settings video series will be back next week. So if you haven't subscribed yet, hit that button and ding that bell. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button too. Share it with whoever you can and leave a comment if you're feeling chatty. Until next time, I'm Barry Callister of Barry Callister Photography and Photographer's Freedom. Get out there, take some wicked shots, and I'll see you soon.